We begin with our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that your name be glorified in all that you do. We ask that we may serve you, love you, honor you, and obey you. And we ask that we may come to always be channels of your love in all our times. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, I was uh, beginning some spiritual reading, and I thought I might take today to share a little bit about what I'm reading. Now, I've read this before. I think the last time I read this was in the seminar, and it was actually an assignment for a class. But the author I've read consistently at, at other times, and the author is St. Teresa of Avila, and the book is Interior Castles. Now, it's important to understand that when you're reading about saints, I always tell people to consider reading books by saints, not about saints. Now, there's nothing wrong with reading about saints, absolutely nothing. And a lot of people uh, have shared very important books about saints. So that's okay. And and don't think I'm, I would even turn around and, and say you shouldn't do that. But you also want to include books by saints. Now, why would I say that? Well, simple. Um, when you read a book about a saint, you're getting either a impression of the person from a distance, even if it's even if it was their best friend or whatever. You're getting from a distance, um, or you're getting uh, an impression of a person who's done a tremendous amount of research on a saint, but the distance is over time. It could be centuries. But a book. Uh, by a saint is the saint's actually wor- actual words. And these words will give you a deeper understanding because this is what the, the, the saint said. So if you have a combination of both, that is good because you're getting the impression by the saint, but you're also getting an outside impression. And both of them will give you a more balanced, balanced understanding. And really, why do people read write books about saints because the saints preached the word by the way they lived their lives so it's important for example we may read something about saint francis and consider saint francis who who the franciscans will tell you was the closest saint to acting like jesus did um and still was obviously not jesus but saint francis had a aversion to lepers. A lot of people don't know this, and he had aversion to lepers. So it wasn't until the later part of his life that he realized how he could not live as a person who sought to live the gospel of the Lord and have this aversion to lepers. So you can see that he had a transformation over time, but you'd also want to understand that within the context of the life of the saint as well as outside of the context of life, life of the saint. And always keep in mind that when saints uh, wrote, a lot of what they wrote was time-centric. Now, the principles of spirituality that they wrote, wrote of were not time-centric. They are universal. But for example, I suppose this isn't a great example, but I, I will give you one. Uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori talks about the importance of going to a doctor and getting leached, which obviously is not done, hasn't been done in centuries. But during his time, and he died two years before the United States Constitution was ratified. So you can understand that during his time in Europe, that was a practice. So you may want to read this and go, Oh, well, I don't believe we should be doing that anymore. Well, we shouldn't be doing that anymore. Of course not. But it was time-centric because, obviously, he wouldn't know our time. So you always got to look at all of that together. So I started reading a book that I wrote, that I read, not I wrote, I read a long time ago when I was in the seminary. I have since read the writings of this saint, but not this particular book. And that is Interior Castles by St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa of Avila has uh, such tremendously good writing that I'd always recommend her. She's the one who I like to quote all the time what a stupid idea it is. I don't know if I have that quote exact, but what a stupid idea it is for there to be a road. And at the end of that road is a, is a great treasure. And that road not be filled 
with thieves, marauders, and obstacles, which, of course, she's referring to the road of life. And we always know in our teaching that there are always uh, forces, and we can even say the devil's involved, too, trying to get us off that road. We know that. But uh, St. Teresa of Avila brought that up. So, you know, if you're going through a difficult time and you say, but why would I go through this time? I'm a believer in God. And she would turn around and say, well, look at what you're doing. You're trying to get to the greatest of all treasures. And you really think there wouldn't be thieves, marauders and obstacles. What a stupid idea. So uh, that was St. Teresa of Avila. She was very down to earth. Uh, in, in all that she did. And, and her most famous quote is when she was riding to, uh, I guess, another monastery and uh, she got thrown off a horse into a mud puddle. And she spoke, uh, you know, she spoke to the Lord, she prayed to the Lord, uh, or she, actually she heard the Lord say to her, this is how I treat my friends. And she said to him, well, that's why you have so few of them. So she had a great sense of humor. She had a, a very down to earth way at, of looking at things. And she brings that out in her writings. And I'm just at the very beginning of the interior castle. I'm familiar with the story because I, I read it a long time ago. It's it's actually her teaching. It's not a story. It's her teaching. And she talks about the journey into uh, the experience of prayer. And one of the things she shares, which is important, is that this castle that she describes, which obviously is this castle, which is the journey of life, is more like the way a crystal is set up. She says where the center of the crystal is where the great treasure is, but it's not so much a a linear road as much as a series of rooms that surround the great treasure. We'll talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE 590 AM. You can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. And don't forget, if you enjoy what you are listening to here, let people know and tell people that, hey, I'm listening to this program. I really enjoy it. So please continue consider that. CatholicAudioMedia.com is where you can find us, and we are also here at WEZE midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning. We'll be right back right after this. On April 30th at 8.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. at the Holy Cross Cathedral in Boston, Hope Conferences will present a presentation of Fearless, which includes four profound talks, praise and worship music, a celebration of Holy Mass, adoration, and reconciliation. And the attendees will experience the reignition of courage and renewal of identity so necessary for our time. Be transformed into spiritual warriors they are inviting you to experience. You can experience that again April 30th, 8.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m., followed by an intimate evening of praise and worship with Matt Maher. For more information, go to hopeconferences.com. That's hopeconferences.com. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. Well, we're here talking about the uh, words of St. Teresa of Avila in her book, Interior Castles. And uh, I'm at, at the beginning of it, but do keep in mind that I am, uh, I've read the book before. I've read her, her other material before. I was on a, I've talked to you, to you about this before. I was uh, a hermit for um 11 days uh, one time and then uh, one year and then the following year about uh, probably about the same amount of time and it was during that time and afterwards I read The Way of Perfection which I'd highly recommend you excellent book excellent book but we go back to uh, the interior castles and one of the things she talks about is the importance of prayer. Prayer is essential and she talks about as you walk into the castle which is you're going from the outside to the inside. Now, you have to remember, this is Spain in the 16th century. 
there are a lot of reptiles that are on the outside and you're living with the reptiles until you decide to get inside. But there are still some reptiles that get in with you. Well, what's she talking about? She's talking about the temptation to sin. She's talking about sinful practices that you may have lived before you decided to walk the path of Christianity. And so she's talking about that. And she basically highlights how that goes away slowly as you get closer and closer to the center. But she says the key element, and this is so important, is in fact prayer. And one of the things that I was on this, uh, I was at a meeting last, well, two weeks ago at the Ark in the Dove, which by the way is the home of the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church. But we were having this business meeting and a priest who was part of my fraternity of priests talked about how a um, Protestant minister, a, a, an evangelical minister, explained how um, what we're called to do, we're called to live morality, but morality with relationship, relationship with Christ. Actually, we're called our morality is based on love of God and love of neighbor. And we really can't live our Christian life if we're not rooted in that relationship with God, obviously relationship with neighbor. As a matter of fact, and I know St. Teresa of Avila teaches this as well, that our prayer relationship needs to translate in how we treat others. It's got to do that. So that's an important aspect that prayer is essential. And that's what Interior Castles is all about. It's all about prayer. It's all about rooting ourselves in prayer. It's all about seeking to live the gospel powerfully. And that's what it's all about. It's all about knowing how to live rooted in prayer, but our prayer has to translate into our action. So it's it's a powerful message that she brings up. And the more we engage in deeper forms of prayer, the less that we are surrounded by the reptiles, meaning the less we are surra- surrounded by a sinful life. So that prayer relationship is so essential to everything we do. We have to be people of prayer. And if we don't understand that, then we're not living our Catholic life. So just something uh, I wanted to share with you. If you're looking for some good spiritual reading, I would recommend Interior Castle or anything by St. Teresa of Avila or many of the, or all of the other saints and uh, something to look at. Anyway, we will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, remember, we are here every single Monday through Friday at midnight and three o'clock in the morning right here on WEZE and CatholicAudioMedia.com. You know, we have a website for our programs that will connect you to the parish, the blog, and to share your prayer requests with us. If you've been touched by our program, you can even show your support through your donation. We are at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's all one word, CatholicAudioMedia.com. It is updated regularly with blog posts and podcasts of the program. So stay connected with us and tell us how this show has touched your heart. CatholicAudioMedia.com In Cristo vivimos.